I'm Rob from Smartphone Innovations. In this video, I will demonstrate how to add a digital gauge alongside an existing analog gauge. Specifically, I will focus on setting up a digital fuel tank level gauge. This method is quite versatile and can be applied to a variety of resistance-based sensors and analog gauges, such as those for water tank levels, engine coolant temperatures, engine oil pressure, etc., etc. Integrating existing analog gauges into our smart boat system offers numerous benefits. A key advantage is the capability to set alerts for when the value reaches a specific threshold. These alerts can trigger a variety of responses, such as sounding an indoor siren, activating an outdoor horn, broadcasting speech via speakers, flashing lights, or sending notifications to our display devices like tablets and smartphones. Additionally, our system allows you to access historical data for the sensors we've digitized. This feature enables you to track and analyze fluctuations over time. For example, with a fuel tank sensor, you can gain insights into the engine's fuel consumption patterns. And finally, you'll enjoy the digital sleek gauge on your smart boat's dashboard, enhancing both functionality and aesthetics. For this digital project, we'll be harnessing the power of the extremely versatile ESP32. The ESP32 functions as a remote hub equipped with numerous ports to connect to a wide variety of sensors. In our case, it will connect to our existing analog sensors. It will collect data from these sensors and transmit it wirelessly to our central system, a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. If you haven't set up an ESP32, don't worry, I have a separate video guide dedicated to that, providing a quick and easy setup. For this project, we'll also be using the Compact INA219 device. It's available for about $2 from AliExpress. It's straightforward. All we need to do is connect a single wire from the INA219 to our tank sensor, link the INA219 to the ESP32, and then just do some basic configuration in Home Assistant. With a single ESP32, we can connect up to eight INA219 devices. So if you're following my engine monitoring videos, you can keep using the same ESP32. So let's get started. Here is the ESP32. Please watch my previous video about how to set up the ESP32 and connect power supplies and integrate it with Home Assistant. Now I like to use one of these breakout boards when I use the ESP32. Um, it just makes it easier to work with connect wires and sensors and also makes it a little bit less, less fragile. It's, it's much more robust when it's connected to this board. So the pins, you line up the pins and you just push it left, right, left, right and you leave it in until the pins go all the way in. Just make sure you've orientated the, the pin numbers and the pin names the right way between the ESP32 and the breakout board. For this project we're going to use the INA219 board. It's tiny, it's about the size of my finger. On the front there are six tiny pins, of which we're going to use four, and on the other side we have two pins, the VIN plus and VIN minus. Now, normally you can buy these and they're soldered, but lately when I looked on the web, most of them don't come soldered. In the description below, I have a link to an INA219 board which is soldered. But if you have one that's not soldered, you have to put it all together. So these, these tiny pins go into the, the six holes. It's not symmetrical, so the shorter pins go into the holes and the long ones stay out. And the other end, you have the the screw terminals which go into the two holes. Obviously the screw terminals facing outwards. Now the solder I always put on a, a piece of wood. Now before I solder it I'd like to just put it on something. Here's a bit of blue tack or play-doh from your kid's room. So unless you have three hands it just makes it easy to solder. So what you do is you just touch the soldering iron when it's hot onto the pin let it heat up for a few seconds and touch the solder onto the pin as well. 
So you heat, heat the pin up for a few seconds and then touch the solder to the pin. And it's quite quick. Don't add too much. Make sure it doesn't flow from one pin to the other. But it's, it's not too hard. You can do these really quickly. We do, we, we do these six. And then the other side we have the two, the VIN in, the VIN plus and the VIN minus. And there we go. There all the pins are soldered on. If you don't like this, just buy the buy the one that's come comes pre-soldered. You just check all the pins are they're solid, they're not moving around, so we've done a good job. So when I do this sort of work, we're connecting the, do an ESP32 and uh, to this board, I like to use these DuPont cables or breadboard cables. Um, you can buy a bunch for not much. Uh, I like to select the colors which sort of match the project I'm doing. So here we can have red for the plus three volts and green for the ground. And then there are two data pins there the clock and the data and I will just use two different colors for that maybe a brown and a yellow so the pins from left to right the first pin is the power pin I think it's enabled VCC so it's going to be three volts that's going to come from the ESP32 you just push these into the, the you just push the dupont cable down as the pin they're a tight fit so you just got to wriggle it around a bit the next one is the ground one which is the which is the next pin to the right and the, the pins are labeled on the board. The third one is the clock pin. So there's this two two cables which go send the data the clock and this this fourth one which is the, the data pin. And there we go, they're all the cables that we're going to use to connect the INA. 219 to the ESP32. Uh, since I've got these ones with female and female, I'm just chopping off these females so, because I'm using the, the breakout board for the ESP32 and they have screw terminals. So just I'll just chop off the, um, the females. You can buy these DuPont cables with males on the other end as well, but I just usually buy a set of female females, trim off the ends of the cables. We have the ESP32, which is left over from our, our engine temperature project. So we're going to reuse the same one. That's the beauty of these ESP32s. We can add many, many sensors to them. So basically the plan is to have one for the engine monitoring. We're going to add all the sensors to that same ESP32. If we connect the cables here. First one is the ground cable. So the brown is the clock cable that goes to pin 22. The yellow is the data cable that goes to the pin 21. And the red is the three volt that goes into the three volt pin. This is the same one we're sharing, sharing with the temperature sensor. So there are all the connections we need between the INA219 and ESP32. So now all we have to do is connect the INA219 to our sender or sensor. And to do that, we need to connect this, this red wire. It's connected in, on the INA219, it's connected to the VIN plus terminal. And on your sender or sensor, there are a number of uh, terminals there. You need to connect this red cable to the one that's marked gauge. Now, since you, if you're going to share the same sender with uh, the, the analog gauge to our, our smart smart boat system, you might have to use like a, a spade double adapter like this to share the one terminal between two gauge wires. One wire will go to your analog gauge, the other wire will go to this INA219 for our smart boat. And there we have it. That's all the wiring complete. 
and we just have to head off to Home Assistant to do some configuration. Here we are in Home Assistant. To follow on with this part, you really need to have watched the ESP32 video and have created a ESP32 device. So I've created one. So if you go to ESP Home, I've created an ESP2 device and I've named it Digital Gauges. If you want to rename these, you can just rename the host name down here. If it comes in with a name you don't like. So if we go to edit, uh, it's an empty empty YAML. This is basically the basic one. So to make life easier, I've on my website I've put the YAML you need to put in here. So if you go to my website, smartboatinnovations.com, and then go to code, and then scroll down and go to the digital digital gauge YAML, and let's just copy this bit of code, put it back into, into here and paste. And what's, what this is defining is defining the interface to INA219. And it's basically gonna say, it's saying that we want to read the voltage. And that's how all these digital gauges are going to work. We're going to read the voltage at the sender and then we're going to correlate that or, or change that to the type of uh, data the sensor is reading. So in this case, it's a tank voltage. So we're going to correlate that to the percentage tank, tank full. Uh, if you're doing oil pressure, you're going to then measure the voltage and correlate it to the, uh, the bar pressure. Or if you're doing a engine temperature, you can again, you can read the voltage and have a correlation to the engine temperature. So this bit of YAML is just basically going to create a entity called tank center voltage using the INA219 with the default address. So we save that. Then I always like to go back and then we'll validate. Well, okay, and then we can install. Install wirelessly, OTA, over the air. This takes uh, some time, so I'll speed it up. Okay, so it's successfully compiled it and it's uploaded it. And here you can see it's uh, already measuring the, the voltage. It's zero volts because the gauge is not, it has no uh, voltage applied to it because it's a, a fuel tank gauge and it's connected to my engine electronics. So I have to actually turn the engine electronics on. But before I do that, let's just go and create a dashboard to put this voltage on. So we'll create a dashboard empty dashboard uh, let's just call it tank levels give it icon fuel create open that dashboard edit it let's add the card the entity and done so here we can see the it's zero volts. So I'll turn on the engine electrics. So it's now reading a voltage at the sender of 2.8 volts. Now we need to make a, a correlation between voltage and the percentage full. So I've, I've written some code, which we have to put in our configuration.yaml. We use a studio code server to do that. The configuration.yaml. And again, if you go to my website and you scroll down, there's a tank template YAML. It's quite a large thing. I've made it quite generalized. So let's copy this in. Now to have a correlation, you really need to have some reference points. So we need to know when the, when the tank is full, how many volts the sender is reading and say if, when it's empty or when it's half. So I've written some YAML that you can just put into the declaration. It's quite long, but it's long because it it does it every all for you. It calculates the correlation between voltage and percentage full. It's based on the fact that these these sensors, these analog sensors, they work on resistance, but the relationship is almost 
and linear. Uh, so, so it's a linear graph. So once you get a couple points, you can actually sort of extrapolate a straight line and this, this code does that for you. So here you just need to put the voltage full, uh, how many volts you have when the tank is full and how many volts when the tank is half. Or if you like, you can put how many volts when the tank is empty and we'll figure out uh, your level, percentage level. And this bit of code works both directions because some sensors have the resistance increasing as the tank level increases or the resistance can also decrease as the tank level increases. So this, this bit of code does both directions. Okay, so let's, let's save that. And then we have to do a, a developer tools, check the configuration, make sure it's okay, and then restart. Restart Home Assistant. Now let's go at a, a gauge for the template sensor we just created. So add card, and gauge, tank level we need, and 0%, maximum 100%. Needle gauge, yes. Severity, yes. And let's go. 20, 10, 0. Save that. So with this YAML, you just need to set the volts full or volts half, or if you know the volts empty. And then you also have to set the the sensor name. In my case, my ESP32 was called Digital Gauges, and the tank set of voltages was in the YAML that we put into the, AS, the ESP Home. That's all we really need, really need to do. Uh, obviously, when you first start this, if you don't know the volts level, you have to sort of make a guess. Most of the time, the, the voltage on these is range, ranges from about two to seven or eight volts, maybe. So maybe put a guesstimate for what the volts uh, full and half are. And then once you, you fill your tank up, have a look at the volts and, and update the, the configuration YAML and etc. for when volts are half. And then you'll have an accurate uh, digitized tank measurement. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego!